everybody, it's Nina. Thanks so much for joining me today for a new video tutorial. And today I'm going to be sharing three unique ways to create with background stamps. I know many of us have background stamps in our collection, and there's always unique ways that you can use them to create fun patterns and accents for card designs. Starting off with this ink smushed tone on tone background stamping technique. I'm going to start by taking some Distress Oxide inks and pressing them onto a gel press. This jelly-like surface is great for ink smushing because it really holds the inks in place. I'm going to carefully make sure I don't overlap the ink too much. These will blend together really well once we add some water. I've got four different colors here to create my background color and I'll spray it really well until the ink starts to beat up on the surface of the gel press. Once the inks have some water on them, I will take some Strathmore Bristol paper and smush this into that ink. This is creating a really great blend of colors and all of the colors move really well on the surface of the gel press with the help of the water. I'm gonna end up getting two patterns out of the ink that's on this gel press and I make sure that I tap the paper around just to get some really cool splatters of color. Once those background panels dry, I'm going to bring them into my Misty tool along with the Blowing in the Wind background stamp from Hero Arts. I'll tape my paper down onto my Misty to make sure it doesn't go anywhere because I am going to be stamping multiple times. Now you don't have to stamp multiple times, but I wanted to create a different tone on tone effect with this stamping. But I've also done a few patterns in this same technique using just one color of ink for the stamping. Before I stamp, I make sure I spritz this ink with a little bit of water because I do wanna get the color moving a bit and reacting with the color that's on our background panel that we did the ink smushing on. I'll use the same exact colors that I had used to do the ink smushing, and that's giving me a really nice tone on tone effect. As I stamp between each color, I am cleaning the stamp to make sure that I don't cross contaminate the inks because oxide inks definitely are easily cross contaminated. Here's a few different examples using this technique and on each of these, I varied up how I did the stamping and the ink smushing. So you can see, you get a really great organic effect with these. No pattern is exactly the same, which I think is really fun about this technique. To finish off these cards, I die cut some cute little dandelions from a Hero Arts die set from some ink smushed papers. And I added a big hug sentiment on there from Birch Press Designs. Some sequins and Nouveau drops finished off the card, and I really love how this bright and bold card really makes you think of summertime. Next up, I wanna do some watercolor stamping. Now, watercolor stamping is not a totally new technique, but I wanna ask you one question. Have you ever done this with actual watercolors? This is really cool because it really enhances that watercolor effect and makes it look even more realistic. So I've got some watercolor paper and a background stamp from Simon Says Stamp called Beachy Waves. This particular technique works best with some background stamps that have a lot of solid areas like this one here. After I've put my paper in place, I'm going to bring in some Altenew watercolors. Now you can use any watercolors you like. The key is, is that you want to go ahead and apply the watercolors onto the stamp, coloring in the areas that you want each color to be. The other thing you want to keep in mind with this technique is to not use a ton of water because you don't want the color to beat up on the surface. See how I have a lot of water in that spot on the right? I'm adding more paint to it because I don't want this to be very watery. I want the paint to really cover the surface of this background stamp. I'm adding multiple colors to this because this is what's really fun is you can add as much color as you want and let it even dry a little bit because we're going to go back in and spritz it with just a little bit of water and then stamp it down onto our watercolor paper. Now I use textured watercolor paper to give me a bit more of an organic effect, but you could use some hot press watercolor paper with a smooth texture and you'll get more of a smoother finish. But see how this looks really cool and how the colors blend together? This is what's so much fun about using real watercolors instead of using inks or watercolor markers. I really feel that the watercolor effect really is enhanced when you're using a straight watercolor medium like this. And it's really fun because you get a lot more control and it's easier than using a watercolor marker, I feel, because you can use a bigger brush and you can cover more areas faster and more smoothly. You also don't have to worry about damaging any markers that you might be using too, 
sometimes the nibs of certain markers are a little bit more delicate than others and certain techniques like this can be a little bit harder on them. But paintbrushes are very flexible and have a lot of more forgiveness. So all in all, I really enjoy this technique because of the fact that you can be so freehanded with these watercolors and as long as you don't overdo the water, you get a gorgeous and very crisp image that looks like you took a lot of time to watercolor, but all you did was stamp it and it's really fun. The other fun thing is that as you let things dry, you can go back in with more layers. I love doing this because it really adds a lot of depth to your scenes. To finish off this card, I kept it really simple and just added a few sentiments from the You Are My Sunshine die set from Simon Says Stamp and also the My Favorite Things Sunshine Sentiments stamps. Some sequins add some embellishing along with some Nouveau drops and I really love how this card has a really summery vibe to it. So this last technique I'm calling ink blending, emboss resist, and more ink blending because literally that's how I created it. I love the look of emboss resist, but I thought it would be really fun to take a panel that I already had done some ink blending on and I'm going to add a stamped background on top of this first. So I prepped the surface of my paper to make sure it was good and dry and I'm going to take this stamp market background stamp, which is a flower background, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this over top of that inked panel. Once I've stamped it, I'll use some clear embossing powder. You want to make sure that this is clear. Now in my particular case, case, it's a clear glitter embossing powder from Brutus Monroe called Fairy Dust. But you don't have to use a glitter embossing powder, you can just use any clear embossing powder. The key is that you want to see the color underneath of the embossing. So here's the panel, completely embossed. You can see we have that really nice subtle background. Now the key is, is that we're going to enhance this by ink blending again over top of this background. What I love about this is that it's capturing a really intense, vibrant, blended background, but it, all of the color that we had originally is stuck underneath of that embossing powder. So which means none of that color is getting affected by this ink blending that we're now adding on top. This is a really intense, vibrant effect, and as we buff off the embossing powder, it just really comes to life. You can see how that ink blending now really makes those colorful flowers come, stand out nicely because we have that emboss resist effect going on here with the color from the original paper underneath of that embossing. This is a really unique way to use this and I just finished it off very simply by taking the big high die from the stamp market and cut it into that panel, raised it up a few layers with some white die cuts and then added a some supporting sentiment and some sequins to finish everything off. All of these techniques can be done with most background stamps that you have in your stash. So I encourage you to play around with these techniques, try them out with some things you already have at home, or if you wanna try it out with these particular products that I've used in this video, I have those linked down in the video description below or over at the blog. Thanks so much for tuning in. I will be back again with more to share very soon. And until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye.